There's no negativity. I love everybody. I'm just saying, and you're allowed to Instagram. You don't have to have yourself with walking with black people. All right, folks, uh, you know the story by now. We have discussed it over and over and over, and we'll continue to discuss it. Uh, that was Donald Sterling, the owner of the uh, L.A. Clippers. Joining us now uh, is a man whose uh, relationship I value very much. He is uh, America's psychi uh, psychologist, and it's Dr. Jeffrey Gardier. Hello, doctor. Steve, great to be on with you. Well, thank you very much. All right, let, let's, let's talk about um, uh, these remarks uh, but when you look at these remarks and to, to try to get inside this man's head, uh, you also, I guess, gather as much history as you can about him. And, of course, he has a history of, uh, of, of racial problems. Yeah, he does. I mean, uh, we know that he's a real estate mogul, uh, had to pay fines on uh, for not uh, renting out to African Americans, had some issues with Latinos, I believe, um, you know, had a contentious relationship, I believe, with uh, one of his player uh, coaches uh, at one point, maybe Elgin Bale, I can't remember the, the individual. But, you know, we know the history is there, but we also know the NAACP, for example, has already given him a lifetime achievement award and was going to give him a second one so I think there may be a bit of a disconnect here between what the public may know about uh, this individual sterling and what maybe the insiders have always known especially those in the NBA circles all right well and let me let me tell you breaking on ABC News today is that the NAACP says they're willing to forgive Donald Sterling and willing to work with him um, in the future. God teaches us to forgive in the way I look at it after a sustained period of proof to the African-American community that those words don't reflect his heart. I think there's room for forgiveness. I wouldn't be a Christian if I said there wasn't. So, um, you know, he, uh, he has an opportunity, an open door with that group at least. Well, I, I believe those words, the way they came out, and let's face it, he was uh, in some ways uh, led uh, in uh, to saying some of those things. I think they were in his heart. I think they do reflect his heart. However, I do agree with the NAACP that everyone should be given a chance to confront their past, to confront their thinking patterns and to be able to do better in life. I mean, that's what redemption is all about. And I think even uh, this man, Sterling, has redemption somewhere in his future. Hopefully, he'll learn from this very, very difficult time in his life and in our history. All right, let, me, let me ask you this question. And again, I just want to make it clear, because this is what you have to do if you're perceived you know, in a conservative way as a conservative talk show host. you got to make it crystal clear. I in no way defend or condone what Sterling Sterling said. Having said that, let's let me play devil's advocate with you, a man in your position. It's it's a unique position, uh, th and I don't get to talk to someone who has your qualifications on this kind of a topic very often. Here's a man who obviously is is dating or or sleeping with or having a relationship with a woman of mixed race. Okay, yeah. uh, he said during the conversation, "I'm not racist." You know, this. Uh, who do you think pays, you know, the salaries and gives the players, uh, the black players cars and puts food on their table, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the NAACP did honor him once and was good to honor him again. So first explain, you know, the, the, uh, the, the uh, I guess, how you reconcile all of this. And, and, and as a second question, did the NAACP support uh, right along throughout all the problems we've discussed give him kind of a, a, a confidence boost to let him feel he could maybe get away with certain things? Well, uh, I'll, I'll answer your second question first, and that is uh, we know that uh, Sterling has been very generous with the NAACP and some of their causes, and I think it's only a human tendency when someone is pouring the money in and they have good intentions uh, that you will honor them and look the other way when it comes to some things that are very negative. And I think it speaks about life in general, Steve. I mean, yeah, this guy certainly is a racist, but does that mean that he's an evil person and everything he does is bad 
or like almost all of us, are there is there the good, the bad, and the ugly? And certainly we've seen the ugly and the bad, but there may be good uh, to this individual Sterling. But how do you reconcile someone uh, who says, don't bring blacks to my games. Um, I don't want you to have blacks on Instagram. Um, and, and they're half black and he's and he's dating her, you know? And so, he's dating yeah. a woman who's half who's half black, half Mexican. Well, look. We know again, um, this is the many that we see many facets to a human being. Uh, there have been other people who are out and out racists, like I believe Sterling is from his uh, from his verbalizations, who like the forbidden fruit. Uh, they may think that a particular race is less than, but yet still be attracted to someone within that race. So what have we seen with Senator Strom Thurmond, for example, uh, was a segregationist, but yet slept with his housekeeper, gave birth to a child, never acknowledged her publicly, but always took care of her. Well, let me ask you this. Let me stop. You. Again, I am playing devil's advocate. I do not support Donald Sterling in his remarks or anything else. But let, let, maybe the conversation was like, he said, he said, you know, hang out with Magic Johnson. Bring him here. Sleep with him. I don't care what you do with him. It, it, can it be that in his mind, or in, in fact, he gets pressure from friends or feels pressure that I'm dating this mixed-race woman and, and, and my friends see her parading around in his mind with, with other blacks of her own race or the people of her own race and it makes me look bad? Could that be the context of all this? It certainly might be the context, but if you're a stand-up guy, uh, so what if people criticize you? Oh, uh, no, absolutely. And again, I'm not defending it. I'm just sure, trying to get to, because we don't know what brought, what sparked the conversation, you know? So I'm just trying to maybe make sense of it all, of what, oh, yeah. what how it came about, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Certainly that may be part of what's going on, but the reality is you have practically a 99% black team. You've had a, a, a black coach or black coaches. Come on, I mean, let's be real here. I mean, if you talk the talk, you better walk the walk. Uh, you are affiliated with blacks in every sense of the word. You provide a living for them, they provide a living for you. So no matter what anyone may say as to who your social circle is, you have to be true to yourself and say, listen, everyone is created equal and I'm going to treat everyone equally. And you, and you know what's funny? Uh, again, another paradox. He had a black general manager when there were only two black general managers in the league. I believe it was Elgin Baylor, if, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, I heard this on the ride home, uh, Mike Francesa here in New York on, on, on sports uh, on, on WFAN. And he said that he, he had him, and he kept him on through terrible losing seasons when he could have fired the guy. And he didn't. So that's another kind of paradox. But let me let me play. No, well, but, but, but let me stop you there. But he and Elgin Baylor had a very At uh, the end, uh, yes. contentious relationship. Yes, yes. And Elgin Baylor and said that there was a slave owner mentality yes. to uh, Donald Sterling. Yes, that's so, fair. Yes, you know, absolutely. it all comes back into uh, play here. All right. Let me let me let you hear what Meta World Peace uh, uh, had to say about this. Of course, sure. uh, NBA. Um, here's here's what he said about what's going on. You know, at the foundation, you know, of this problem, it's something where, you know, racism, is, I think, is a, it's, it's a mental health issue, you know, um, sort of. I think it could be, it could be healed. I think he was speaking in, in uh, very childish, and he's been like that probably since he was a child, so I think he needs help. Um, and I'm not saying that to, you know, go against what everybody else is saying, how they're feeling emotionally, but when I look at everything overall, uh, Mr. Sterling needs help. He needs help, but he called it a, he said racism um, is, a, is a mental health issue. Mental health issue. I mean, right. he's, a, he's obviously, he, he's not you, he's not in the profession, neither am I. He's a basketball player, I'm a talk show host. Uh, you're the expert. So is racism a mental health issue or, or, or not? I, I, I've often said, and, and when I see Meta World Peace, I'm going to have to talk to him about that. Hey, tell him I said hello. Office. I don't know him, but tell him I said hello. No, go ahead. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but, you know, bottom line is that it is a mental health issue because what you're doing is you uh, have a belief system that may be based on stereotypes, but that 
may not be based in reality. So what we're talking about pretty much are delusional uh, sorts of thoughts. But I, I want to say this, Steve. You know, everyone is focusing in on Sterling. Yeah, we got and, a minute to go, so go ahead. Sure. What he said, what he did was despicable. But this is not a Sterling problem. This is a problem that we have in America that a lot of people think this way. And we should not be embarrassed to talk about it, make it part of a conversation as to how all of us can make this better. And this may be one of those situations where Sterling can do better and we all can do better. So a situation where good comes from bad. Again. That's it. Yeah. Hey, Doc, I appreciate your time. I know how busy you are. And thank you again for coming on. We'll speak to you soon, sir. My pleasure, Steve. Thank Take you, care. Dr. Jeffrey Gardier, America's psychologist uh, here on the Steve Malzberg Show. And I just want to point out again, because this is what I have to do, um, I was... Uh, I was being provocative in my questions and uh, bringing up issues I haven't heard brought up anywhere else, really, as to what the context might have been, how he reconciles or how the doctor reconciles a, per a person like Sterling who dates a minority yet says that about minorities uh, and she shouldn't be with other minorities. That, that's, that was the line of questioning, to get information from an expert, not to condone. On the Steve Malzberg Show, we're coming back with Gimme Five. Don't miss it.